<laughs> How's everybody doing? <laughs> okay, we're going to do another video, and this one will be still dealing with incompatibility of signs. And this one will be um, Scorpio man and a Scorpio woman. Scorpio and Scorpio. Yes, uh, I believe it was Miss Miller. I don't think, I think that was her. I'm sorry that I mentioned her name, but uh, she requested this. And there's so many of you guys that have requested so many. Remember, it's 144 combinations. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. But before I begin, I want to say thank you to those of you who have been donating to my GoFundMe page. I just saw the page. I opened it up and I saw that... Um, four people between the four people fifty dollars was donated to the youth theater thank you so much i just got a notification uh, a few hours ago i'm going to do another video and i'm going to name them specifically and i'm also going to do a patron page on my theater on blog with all of your names on it for those of you who have been giving me monetary contributions on my GoFundMe page. I'm going to have you be as patrons, and I will list your full names, of, of course, upon your permission, in my theater blog as people who donate and have been donating. Because I want you to get the credit as well, and I want people to know who you are and that there is a community of people of people out there supporting this and it's important to me and I thank you so much that you are donating and giving me every little bit helps and you've been doing that and I love you guys for it I'm able to now have a little bit of money I still need a thousand dollars though I still haven't reached my target so we can begin the, the new season when we begin in February with Black History Month. And we want to do some exciting things for Black History Month. If you have any ideas and suggestions as to what kind of plays I should write concerning the community of racism, immigration, you know, um, religious tolerance, you know, all the biggies. Go to my GoFundMe page. I have all kinds of stuff written there about the mission statement and what we do. I'll be more than happy to implement your ideas into a play, again, to address community concerns and issues. So I want to thank you so much. This is why I will never tire of doing this service for you. So having said that, we're going to jump right in. And we are going to talk about um, Scorpio and Scorpio, incompatibility of signs. Now, before we begin uh, going into it, we have to talk about uh, Mother Nature and the fixity nature of nature <laughs> and also of the expression of that fixity of nature in the context of personality and ego when we're dealing with the Scorpio human being, both man and woman. So when we're dealing with our Scorpio, in Scorpio, we're dealing with fixed water. Now, fixed water, I mentioned, is water that doesn't move. It's water that doesn't circulate. It's water that can recently become entrapped in, 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 in a subterranean surface. The water doesn't naturally have to have been there. It could collect there. Uh, rain and the water from the rain seeping through fault lines and crevices of the earth can collect in hollow spaces within the earth, creating aquifers that, you know, uh, aquifers are not created that way. Actually, aquifers are remnants of the of our last ice age. But the point is that uh, you can have water circulate from above, which is free space, and then suddenly fall and the earth seep under the ground and get collected in, in, in a vacuum of space in the hollow earth. And then you have water. That's water that becomes trapped in there. So you have what, that type of fixity, entrapment. The other type of fixity is a natural formation of 
a body of water underneath the earth that's been there since the last ice age. And these we call aquifers. And this is where we get most of our natural drinking water. Along with, it's a reservoir, along with fresh water from the lakes. And the lakes are also fixed water. So you have the natural formation of aquifer, which is uh, water underneath the earth, which is the source of our water, one of the sources of our drinking water. That's another type of fixity. The first fixity we said was water being trapped by falling into cracks and crevices of the earth. Of course, it's not granite and it will seep through and it can cause over time erosion, creating a hollow earth, a hollow space in which further water can collect and water can get trapped that way. That's the first type of fixity, entrapment. The second type is a natural formation from the last ice age, which is an aquifer. Uh, and then you have the aqueduct, which is actually man-made. And then you have another type of fixity. And this fixity is also natural formation, but it's not underneath the earth like aquifers. It's on top of the earth like lakes and rivers and streams. All of that symbolizes fixity of water, fixed water. Salmons. When they swim upstream, you're not going to find them in ocean water, salt water. It'll only be river, fresh water. That's a fixity because otherwise you're not going to find it in the open ocean. And it's certainly not going to swim upstream to be caught by no bear waiting to be fed because you ain't going to find bears in the open ocean. So everything has its topography. Everything has its morphology. Everything has its fixity. So I just described you three types of fixities. Fixity that happens when water gets trapped, which is entrapment. First, second fixity is a natural formation like our aquifer. And the third is a natural formation above, which are the lakes. So this defines three different types of psychologies, which is where I'm getting at. It's the psychology of what that means. In my video, Scorpius, I did talk about the fact that you have all kinds of behaviors of an open ocean in Lake Erie or Lake Ontario. They mimic each other because it is a body of water and it's still water. We have tsunamis and rogue waves in the Lake Erie and Ontario as we do in the open ocean. It is not understood why. It is a complete mystery. That goes in tandem with the mysteries of Scorpio. Still waters run deep. Isn't that the saying? There are... It's, we still don't know what's in Lake Erie. We haven't searched the entire landscape of Lake Erie or Lake Ontario and the ocean floor. It's huge. And we know there are ships and naval vessels and the whole island out there. And all kinds of strange phenomena be happening out there in them lakes. They see all kinds of lights and all kinds of lights coming out of the ocean. You know, and, and things dipping into the ocean, like ships, and like, like spaceships and stuff, disappearing. All kinds of strange things can have been seen. And now, well, the Loch Ness Monster in Scotland, you know, a lake. Because, again, fixed water. And we've never seen the actual creature. We think he exists. There's no real evidence that he does exist. But, yeah, the, 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 the amount of evidence of watching the Loch Ness Monster worldwide has now gone away. The same thing with Sasquatch. The Yeti. In China. People say that they've seen him. We have claimed to have seen our own Sasquatch here in the Americas. 
But there's no proof. But we cannot dispute the fact that many people have seen it. And the same um, current stories repeat themselves generation after generation. So there's got to be something. These are, this is the fixity nature of Scorpio. It's mysterious. It's mysterious. And you don't really truly have a real answer as to what the fuck is going on. You just don't know. <laughs> you just don't know. So let's take that and translate that into what that means psychologically and behaviorally, personality-wise, when we're dealing with, let alone one Scorpio, but we're dealing with um, two Scorpios, a man and a woman. So basically what we have here is that you have either two lakes or two aquifers or two bodies of water trapped somewhere. The ocean, the, well, we know that the ocean is a mysterious place. We know that. We know that. Uh, far more mysterious, though, is the different kinds of life forms that are underneath these oceans or these bodies of waters. There's stuff down there that we have not even, that we, can't even, we cannot even conceive of. Stuff that we, can't, we couldn't even know how to catalog. You can say that these are all absolute horrors or delightful delights that couldn't even reach our imagination of what's down there. So, so you can say that these mysteries that lay underneath these bodies of waters are a treasure trove. So too is the Scorpio man and the Scorpio woman a treasure trove. And they're bringing that to you into a relationship. Here's the problem. They ain't sharing who they are. They ain't sharing. It's not in his or her nature to share their mysteries. So you would then ask yourself psychologically, how could a relationship like this work? The Scorpio woman wants control and she wants to cover as much surface area as she can. But so is he. The Scorpio woman is deceptive and so is he. The Scorpio woman, along with the Scorpio man, use sex as glory and also as a weapon. In order for a relationship for a Scorpio and a Scorpio to work, one has to give in to the other. Now, can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? I can imagine it. I can't imagine it. A little brandy is going a little easy, you know. It's the holidays. Mm -hmm. I'm not much of a brandy drinker, but ooh, ooh, ooh. okay. What does it mean as far as context of behavior and personality? Do you expect the woman to be trustworthy? Do, do you expect her to reveal all her secrets to you? And even if she does, which she probably will not, it's not going to happen right away. This would take time. It will take time because a, a relationship with a Scorpio and a Scorpio, it truly is about discovery of each other not self-discovery because technically you should have already known who you were by the time you reach 30 right by the time you reach a certain age because then if you don't know who you are you shouldn't be in a relationship like i mentioned it's three bodies it's you her and then the relationship as a separate body as a separate entity that has to be maintained and nourished 
No? And for that to happen, the precursor has to be that you know yourself completely as an individual and that you have soaked your wild oats, your wild oats, and that you're ready to move towards the next level of human phase of development and living, which is to now share your life of what you have to offer, not just to society, but to your fellow human beings and also to your intimate other. If you are not at that level in your own personal self-development, then you should have no business being in a relationship because you're going into it not fully understanding you and you're not going to have all of the mechanisms and tools at your disposal because you still don't know what you got because you still don't know you completely to be able to fix a relationship that can reach a complexity that you don't know if you have it within you to fix because you don't know what your capacity to handle a situation could be or might be unless you're put in the situation and you have to learn by trial and error. Why learn this way? Why? If that's a hard way. So one advice, and especially if you're going to be with a Scorpio, if you're going to be with a Scorpio, is that you better know who the fuck you are as a human being, because the Scorpio will know, and he's going to know if you don't know who you are. And if you don't know how to use your own resources that's been God given to you, and he'll take it from you and use it against you and destroy you. I know I sound, I make sound Scorpio like a badass, but he is. I can say that intellectually as an astrologer and also being married to a, to a Scorpio now for 10 years, a man. And my first person was a woman, a wife who passed away. So I know Scorpio. And I understand their psychology. No. And it's about the self-preservation principle. The relationship with a Scorpio has to benefit them. And it has to suit their own purposes. You have to take care of your own needs and purposes within the context of that relationship if you're dealing with a Scorpio. And that in itself can take you off guard. That can take you off guard because you're not going to know that in the courtship phase of the relationship, you'll get to know it once you're in the lair. And who knows if you can get out or you may just have to stay and endure and go through the experience. And if that is the case, if you're in, in that kind of situation, then understand that karmically you were meant to go through this experience. Because another situation that you have to also take into consideration when you're dealing with a Scorpio is that if you're going to be involved with a Scorpio, it's not really a choice of yours. It's really not. It seems that way, but it's really not. It is the universe that put that Scorpio in your midst because either you need some kind of discipline or you need some kind of, of um, self-love, which can happen by sending someone to out, literally destroy you to the point where you're going to have to say, listen, I love myself enough not to go through this shit. Let me fight back. You know, there are many reasons cosmically that a Scorpio is in your midst. But when you're dealing with a Scorpio dating another Scorpio, it becomes a totally totally a question of lust and desire at least initially initially and then well that that's one way and it depends on the age if these are mature folks it that sounds more realistic the other example if you're very young like you're below 30 in your 20s then it could be lust and intrigue and the love of danger and all of that stuff, bad boy, all that kind of stuff. I see that very plausible if that's the attraction when you're young. I don't think that will be really quite the situation when you're much older. But even if it is, at least it is the entry that will pull someone older, of the same age, age appropriateness, towards a situation where people have that kind of propensity then that means that that person is willing to, to handle it. It means also that that person might have had prior experience with the same type of person or situation and can handle this second time around with this different person. 
you know. Uh, it usually becomes more manageable if you're older. But if you're at your prime and you're dealing with this type of intensity that early in the cycle, then you got to be some kind of hot mess that it took a Scorpio to get you straight. Or you are just simply curious and are interested in knowing if you can control and manipulate this type of scorpion, whether you are a man taking it or a woman taking it. The question become is, will you, after the song and dance, because understand when a scorpion and a scorpio get together, there's a sort of song and dance that goes on. A song and dance that goes on, uh, where they're both assessing each other. Think of it like two lions that they meet. And they're both alpha male, and they circulate each other, trying to find that, or measuring each other, looking at themselves up and down as they go, as they circle each other. You know, that's the same situation with a Scorpio and a Scorpio. They want to see the strengths, the weaknesses, what they can obtain from you, or capitalize or gain from you, and what they can provide, or what you can give them, or what you feel they can take from you. It becomes almost like a polarity of poles that is coupled with both fear and excitement and desire all rolled up in one. And that lends to us a very, 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 very exciting experience with uh, a Scorpio and a Scorpio together. The other, uh, the other situation that could occur in which one can succeed in dominating the other because again when two scorpions are together the the in order for it to work one has to submit to the other the question becomes who and how will they do it and will it be abused or will it be abusive or will it strike a balance and with scorpio there's no such thing as balance because they, it really is a sign of extremes so when you have two people together of Scorpio of the same sign, you're dealing with people with two templates of extremes. And since you don't know each other off the bat, you don't know the capability of the extreme of the partner, and he don't know the, the capability of extreme of yours and how far you'll go, or you don't know how far he or she will go. So it becomes a polarized situation. And that can make it even that far more exciting and intriguing. But it can also stagnate the relationship. Remember, it's fixed water. So to get into a rut, it can be very easy, but it's not something that's going to happen and stay that way. The, the, the Scorpio, one of, the, one of you will have to pull out because you cannot handle it. The only way that a Scorpio can succeed in dominating and subjugating another Scorpio in the context of a relationship is if one is older than the other. If one is older than the other, then the one that's younger doesn't have the comparable experience to be able to combat what the person who's older already knows coming into the relationship. And he can use that to either elevate and evolve the younger scorpion, or he can use him to enslave him or her and manipulate its their progress and development and keep them under control. And that, that could be the avenue that they could control. So there has to be a disparity of age for that to occur. If not, then it would be almost like a tug and war. Both parties will have to decide right away what they want from the relationship. If it's to have sex and fuck, great. And then separate ways. If it's to make a relationship happen between the two of them and, and, and have it go really, really deeper than just the sex, even though the sex will be the central nucleus that will keep that kind of relationship together, then in order for it to grow and evolve and continue going up the spiral, they have to reach a common ground in which they have to begin to look at each other cutting through the veil of the honeymoon phase where they put the best foot forward. They have to see the darker recesses. And it's very, I, I haven't seen or heard of any Scorpio that has done that and has given himself deeply through those depths towards another Scorpio. There, it's almost like it's impossible for um, the signs to operate that way. 
I cannot believe that it has been 25 minutes. We're done. Wait for part two.